I have a CMI. Yes, there's a cable. Here you go. Is that the most You want to put the mic in? Yeah, I think. Hello. Good evening, everyone. My name is Alkesh Srivastav, and uh, I'm a master's student here at UMD, and my specialization is in robotics. So the first presentation was completely based on uh, computer architecture, so roll up your sleeves for some control. And I'll be presenting this paper, which is Robot Sound Interpretation Combining Sight and Sound in Learning-Based Control. Before starting this presentation, I want to say that this is a research which was done at University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. And this, I personally believe, is the next step towards the human and machine interaction. Uh, much of it was also discussed in the first of the uh, presentation, and I will cover some part of it. So since this class was all about artificial intelligence and its fundamentals, everything boils down to one thing. What are the main, uh, you know, the fundamental senses that human ha has? Because artificial intelligence is basically the mimicry of human intelligence. So based on that, we have been taught from the start, and it is a well-known fact that we have five senses, our ability to see, hear, taste, touch, and smell. Now, out of these uh, five senses, there are two senses which are quite redundant for a machine. For example, the ability to smell or taste. I mean, just imagine if a robot or an artificial intelligence agent just smells a you know, mind-blowing pizza and says, or worse, it tastes and says, damn, this is a good pizza. So that will be the day when you will start fearing artificial intelligence instead of, you know, data breaches and all. Apart from that, why I'm mentioning this? Because this paper focuses on three of these uh, important senses, the ability to see, hear, and touch. Let me explain how. So uh, this is the title of the paper, Robot Sound Interpretation Combining Sight, sound, uh, sight and Sound in Learning-Based Control. The one highlighted in the red are sight and sound. That is our ability to see and our ability to uh, listen in learning-based control. So an intelligent system, a robot, would combine its ability to see, to hear, and then it will come up with a policy or a plan through which it will touch and interact with the, uh, with the environment. So we are covering the touch concept and come up with the control sequences. Now, I said that this is a uh, next step to the human-machine interaction. Why? Because before this, before prior to 2019, most of the work that was done on uh, learning-based control was re uh, relied completely on audio to text transcription. This uh, resulted in loss of context. Why is this important? Suppose I have this marker and I say, hey, Kevin, catch this. If this command was given to a robot, I say, hey, robot, catch this. This has a uh, loss of information. So the robot will say, OK, hey, I'm ready. Catch. I'm ready to catch. This, this is what. So that's where the robot gets blank. And over here, we will try to interpret the meaning of sound. That's why it's sound interpretation. And it will enhance the decision-making ability of a a uh, robotic system or an intelligent system. So we will see uh, if a robot is able to see this marker, then hey, catch this. Then it will interpret the meaning that it has to catch this marker. And this is how it will en enhance the decision-making ability. Now, a bit of maths, because that makes more sense uh, when we are trying to deal with a problem statement. This is a Markov decision process problem in an episodic environment. It will uh, deal with three state variables, because we are trying to combine three senses, which is sound feature, I sub t, M sub t. Sound feature is the ability to listen. Image input is what we see. And M sub t is the state uh, of the agent, the physical state vector of the agent. Now, just like any reinforcement learning algorithm, we will try to maximize some reward, and magic happens. In words, what we're trying to do is we'll take these three things as an input, and then we'll try to come up with a policy. 
a policy is basically a probabilistic plan in terms of planning. Those who have done planning, they will know. So it will try to come up with a policy to accomplish the task that has been assigned. The methodology. So uh, I said that we'll be combining three things. So yes, it has three component, sound interpretation, visual motor integrator, policy learning, and all three of them will combine to a joint architecture and will give us the output. Now, the thing over here is I've highlighted a concept vector in yellow. The reason why, uh, in the start I mentioned that this is a step to the future. And this, is, this concept vector is basically the attempt of the scientists to uh, you know, enhance the sense of uh, combining sound to meaning of for a machine. Just like the marker, if, you're, uh, if I say hey, the meaning of this hey is that you have to look at me. So this is a this is uh, the work will not exactly replicate that you know providing the intelligence but yeah it is a step towards conceptualizing that thing so that's why I've highlighted this concept vector over here and it is very important for this project now uh, network architecture it ha it will have three component the first component was sound because this is completely based on sound now deep learning enthusiasts are now using MFCCs which is male frequency uh, sepsial coefficients, which, uh, which is being used for uh, you know, analyzing sound features. So this is what they are doing. They are using MFCCs and passing through a fully connected layer, and then this is a bi-directional LSTM through a tension layer, and then as you can see, the concept vector is used here. Now, there's something incomplete over here, because there's an arrow up, and it's going nowhere, because we will be combining, as I said, we will be combining what we listen to what we see. So image is the input that the robot will see. This is using a VGG16 or a similar architecture to uh, you know, classify an image or what this task is. And the input from here is given up. And again, some component is given up, but something is missing. Because I said we'll be combining three things, our ability to see, uh, listen, and you know, touch. The touch factor is done by robot state vector, or what state the robot is in. So as you can see over here, this output is then again provided with some of the neural network things the, where the magic happens, and then is provided to a fully connected layer, giving us value function and policy. Value function and policy are integral part of any planning uh, you know, project. So uh, it always boils down to these two things. Policy is basically, as I said, it's a plan with probabilistic outcomes. The result, the result has been astonishing. The scientists use three different types of signals. Uh, yeah, they are not just uh, you know, beginning and communicating like, hey, just catch this marker. They have used single word speech signal, environmental sound, and single tone, as you can see over here. And the result is astonishing, like 92% of success rate in word set one. Word set one belongs to zero, one, two, three. <laughs> stuff with mask on. And with, you know, the C4, D4, E4 are the sounds of the piano or for the Indian here, Sare Gama. So, the, uh, so they have used these signals and tried to train the network with its ability to see and its ability to control a system. I would like to show what they actually did. This is a simulation video that has been open sourced by them. Dog. So it said dog. And dog in the system was related to a sphere. The turtle bot over here tried to find where the sphere is. This is the camera view. It found it, and it started moving. So first, it listened. It saw what it's uh, there in its surrounding. And then with some control sequence, it interacted with its surrounding Dog. and come up with a uh, you know, policy to move there. Now, simulation sounds fun, but the real fun begins when we do it in real, real world. And they did that. House. This is a real turtle board. House is associated with cube. It listened, analyzed, tracked the cube, and went there. It wasn't only successful, it did it for all the different, you know, tr uh, for different tracks. Tree. Tree is associated with cylinder. So first it listened, analyzed the sound, came up with the concept vector, checked the images of the environment, found it, and the control sequence called it to the place where it belonged. This is, I believe, is something interesting because the future lies 
here. House. How do I skip? Okay. Now the future lies here, and every future also has some future. So the future work of this is what I, uh, you know, demonstrated earlier. Single sound sounds fun, but yeah, we need a like a sequence of words that would act as a command for the robot, through which we'll be, be better be able to interact. Yes, Siri is able to interact with you with your words, but it is lacking context. And that context can be fulfilled by this. And I believe this is the next, uh, next step, which also uh, he, he demonstrated earlier, that by combining visual input and RL, we were able to come up with good things. Here we are combining sound and you know, our environment. And yeah, who doesn't love feedback? Feedback to, a, uh, to such a model would always increase its efficiency. And it will be a building block towards you know, robot language acquisition and human-robot interaction. Thank you. And if you have any question, feel free to ask. Sure. So uh, no, it is not a newly developed. So MFCC is basically, uh, I think it's uh, some of those who are in computer engineering might be knowing. It's actually a signal power spectrum. So it's a signal power spectrum that has, uh, what is actually happening is that deep learning enthusiasts are finding it very useful for their purpose. So it's helping them in analyzing sound instead of, uh, sound is actually, what actually differentiates is sound is actually a non-stationary signal. What that means is statistics are not same throughout. So with MFCC, they are creating small windows throughout the, you know, if there is a signal, they create a small window and through which they are able to analyze. I don't know the depth of it, but that's how I know that MFCCs are actually helping in, uh, you know, deep learning things. So it's not new, but it is being widely used. I'm not familiar with the robotics things, but you said, Data from touching. How do you get it? Uh, so uh, these are the data sets that are readily available. You know, the word, word set one and the word set two. These are the sound data set that are available, available in the, you know, like Kaggle or somewhere. So they trained it using that, you know, different variation of one, two, three, just like MNIST data set. These are the data set on which they trained. Oh, sorry. Uh, can touching. touching. So yeah, by touching I mean uh, so when I when I'm trying to revolve this, I'm trying to touch this and doing this is my control sequence and this through my touching I'm able to interact. So by touching I conveyed that this robot did not have any hand. That's sure, but it was able to touch the glass and was performing you know control sequences of moving from one place to another. So by touching I meant that you know you can interact. Uh, yes, you can add, uh, you know, an effector, and you can say, hey, pass me water. So it can test the glass, and it to you, and it can be trained in a different manner. But Train. by touching, I meant that, you know, you can interaction with the environment. Oh, okay, you mean the loss function? Yeah, there are four uh, loss function. I didn't uh, came here because of the time crunch. So they have four terms over here. These two terms are basically from, uh, the. these two terms are from the visual motor integrator. So the first term is for multi-label classification, like we had four things, house, tree, etc. So what is the error of that? What is the loss of that? And the second term is LT, which is binary. So binary means, so uh, I said house. Uh, and it meant, you know, cube. So was I able to find when I was traversing, was I able to find that yes or no? So that was the component where this this thing happened. Christian? Okay. Really good. Different than next to slide. Um, I was curious, especially because on that, on that layout, you have attention layers. So why do you use that only in fan and not in any other one? Yeah, so uh, I think even... Uh, Christian also mentioned about this, that uh, uh, LSTM are long short-term memories, and they need an attention layer that we'll actually study in the class. We need to talk about that. Yeah, so uh, attention layer helps, you know, memorizing it. Yeah, we need to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> memorizing it early, but 
uh, with robot state vector, all I can see is that you don't uh, need to know the robot state from the past. Because the robot state, it just if it is here, it doesn't matter if it came from here, in this case especially. So they did not use the attention layer. That's what I believe after analyzing your question. Whereas for sound features, yes, you need to know the various components of the sounds from the past. So that's why they must have used it over here.